Hey Brick Maniacs, welcome back to another Friday sit rep. This week we're featuring a brand new P47 pre-order as well as the Black Panthers crew pack. So let's dive in, take a closer look. All right, we're kicking things off with a very special pre-order. This is the P-47 Redtail from the 332nd Fighter Group. Uh, Brennan was our designer for this kit. It is an absolutely phenomenal build, super sturdy, uh, still in its prototype phase, so we're gonna have him talk a little bit more about all the printing. But uh, Aman, tell me a little bit more about how you got this thing up off the ground because the end result is just <laughs> excellent. Well, there, were, there was a lot of head scratching with this one, definitely, because you need something that's bulky, you need something that's tough, but one of the biggest things, a couple of biggest things, you need to get that dihedral in there. Yeah. And we can't have a, <laughs> I, I hate to say it, but we can't have another Warhawk mm -hmm. where- It's too severe of an angle. Where, where that angle is just too severe. And it, it took me a couple of good weeks to kind of figure out how to get that angle right. And I finally got it. It's, it's, it's a lot easier to do when you have a lot of space in there to work mm -hmm. with. Fuselage um, specifically is what you're talking about. Fuselage right? specifically, yep. when you have some space in there to manipulate some parts and get something really based and, and right. stuck in there. And it's and they're sturdy too. They they maybe wobble a little, but they're not going anywhere. Oh, you love to see that. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about those. Also, something I tried to figure out, you may have noticed, uh, we've got the guns mm -hmm. buried in there. That was something that uh, that I felt the need to do after I, I did with the the wildcat at that one point we've got those kind of sticking out of the wings i wanted something similar because you've got this staggered build and i didn't want them hanging off the bottom yep or kind of sticking out in a weird way that wasn't right so mm -hmm. you've got your 850 cals sticking out the way they ought to um love that attention to detail especially when it comes to manipulating the bricks and you're not just like yeah print them <laughs> exactly. I would total. I, I I've definitely thought about things like that before, mm -hmm. but I I just wanted to get it right. Um, got uh, some lovely details underneath. We're fully loaded out here. Yeah. So you've got uh, one of the more early war drop tanks. You've got ten five inch uh, high velocity air rockets, and two. I believe there are hundred pounder bombs okay. on there, uh, which you can have without. You don't need to because this while this thing is very famous for ground attack and just absolutely decimating trucks, tanks, trains, and whatnot. Um, it, it's also a fighter. I mean, that's yep. kind of the big thing about it. Um, got a lovely little landing light that I'm very proud of. Um, yeah, for no reason look other at that. Than, for no reason other than knowing that it's there. Yep. Um, folding wheels that fit in there nice and tight. Didn't get any covers on them, but you know, you I think there's a lot more to like about this build. <laughs> oh, ser seriously. <laughs> if, that, if that's your only trade-off, that's not a problem. Like, but can you cover the landing gear? <laughs> well, no. We're but... doing well already then. Exactly. So you got all that going down there. You can fold the back ge uh, gear as well if you'd like. Um, that striking red tail, yep. which is super cool. And the yellow stripes down the wings, which is uh, bo both indicators of the fact that this is 332nd. Mm -hmm. um, they would have these different uh, stripes. I think I may have mentioned in the P-40 video, they have the different stripes denoting different squadrons. Exactly. Um, so as for, and, oh, and fairly proud of the canopy. It might be a little bulkier than it's supposed to be, but it, uh, I think I got the shape right. If you've, if you've seen the P-47D, mm -hmm. you've seen this bizarre looking Razorback thing. Right. It's got this, all kinds of weird angles to it. It's got a, a split right down the middle, so you can't have a gun sight sitting in the front. That's mm -hmm. why it's off to the side. Um, but then it, it then it kind of splits back out once you get to the regular canopy. Sure. It, it, I don't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> You're just tasked with replicating, not exactly. understanding. Right. I just build it. Um, as for the printing we're going to have on this thing, awesome. uh, we definitely went all out with this. Uh, we're going to have uh, on the front here around the cowling, just about uh, two thirds up the way here. We're gonna have a similar red to what we have on the tail going all around here. Um, we're gonna have the cowl flaps, which are used as your kind of radiator mm -hmm. uh, on this thing. Those are gonna be printed along this whole length here. Okay. So that's a six piece cross print, which Slam is not happy with me for. <laughs> um, <laughs> we've got, uh, you can already see the gun sight kind of sitting in there. Yep. Um, that's going to have a nice little uh, ground attack print. It's becoming your trademark. <laughs> Seriously, I, I, I just love details like that. 
And, uh, and I managed to fit a two by two tile in there, so you're gonna get a full kind of uh, dashboard. Sweet. So you'll have everything on there. You've got a joystick in there if you want. Uh, I think you'd want it. <laughs> the pilot will. <laughs> Tyler, he'll, he'll definitely appreciate having figle, that. Your mini figle, thank you. Um, we're gonna have, uh, naturally, stars and bars going across the sides, mm -hmm. around here, and one on the wing, um, or on the upper wing. I'd love to put a sticker or something on the bottom, but there's not a lot of room for yes, that. Yes, exactly. I think we'd rather have a big, uh, brick built ordinance anyways. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and one of the strange details that I've always been kind of a fan of, uh, so with the, the gun mounts out here, mm -hmm. um, on the actual plane, they're denoted one, two, three, and four going out. Mm -hmm. And I've seen also a detail in which guns that have been fired a lot, um, the, the actual smoke from the powder burning up has kind of stained the wings. And so you'll see kind of a, a bit of a streak going here, and it's oh, a little more cool. intense here. And further, until it's just practically black where the gun is basically seated in the Inside, wing. Inside, yeah. And so you've kind of got this nice detail that just kind of shows the weathering of this thing has seen combat. Yeah, okay, nice. Not fresh off the line. We're in country here. That's exactly. awesome. So I saw that um, at one point. I mean, you've probably seen things similar with like a Spitfire, for example. Mm -hmm. A lot of those, once the, once the red tape is pulled away, you see, oh, there's a ton of smoke and, and grime that's where right. these guns are. Or burn. even the, the fuel trails on the bomber wings. Same thing. Very yeah. iconic, right? Yeah, you just kind of see that this is... This is not your grandma's P-47. Right, this thing isn't coming out of the factory. This thing has been, been in mm -hmm. country this for a This thing's minute. been flying over Europe for years. That's absolutely so. phenomenal. And I think exactly what people would want to see. Uh, do you want to speak any more on the 332nd? I mean, I don't know a whole ton about them. I mean, there's there we definitely have the, the very first uh, Black Ace, actually, mm -hmm. came from the 332nd, um, uh, Lee Archer. Yep. Uh, amazing man, and they I, th I think they decided to dispute whether he got his full fifth kill, but mm -hmm. only after he'd passed away, which sure. seems kind of rude. But, <laughs> um, but I'll, I'll see him as an ace. I'll see that. Um, well, and I know we definitely got some more information yeah. on the web too, so if you want to read a little bit more exactly. about the, uh, the awesomeness that was, specifically the P-47's involvement in the 332nd, you can read about that, but obviously, like we talked about last week, we have the P-40 out as well, so just a really excellent aircraft lineup for Black Heritage Month. Seriously, yeah, I mean, we've got some, some just, yeah, amazing, amazing lineups. And this one is definitely no exception, now available on BrickMania.com as a pre-order, the P-47 from the 332nd Fighter Group, designed by Brennan. Thanks for checking in, man. Okay, moving on from there, we've got the deuce and a half from the Red Ball Express. Nate's gonna tell us a little bit more about this, uh, well, apparently durable build. <laughs> yes, let's go with that. So this is the uh, CCKW uh, Red Ball, uh, for the Red Ball Express. This mm -hmm. is specifically a 352 uh, short wheel bed model. And okay. I wanna clarify something real quick. I know typically the Red Ball Express mostly used uh, 353 long beds. They did use the short beds, but not as much as the long beds. As to why I chose to do a short bed instead, well, you'll have to wait and see. There's more coming this yeah, year, Yeah, there's yes. more coming. Besides, so there you go. And, and for like my first uh, CCKW, I really wanted to make something we haven't really done before. Mm -hmm. and I haven't really seen many people attempt a short wheel bed, which basically is slightly shorter, but spare tire holders. Nice. Like, boop. Bed comes off nice and easy. Boy, that's cool to see. No, oh, speaking of, canvas. And 3D printed wheels. Oh, yes, yeah, so you want to talk about that first. Good call. <laughs> it's all uh, good. So, yeah, um, there will be 12 of these 3D printed wheels coming in this set because the CCKW had a lot of wheels. Mm -hmm. Both sides, like both sides are different. This would be the front side. This, okay. would be, or this would be for here. And the other side is here. Okay. And yeah. But yeah, the CCKW was the truck that kind of won the war because we made over 570,000 of these things. Wow. Yeah, Holy like 570, comma, zero, zero, zero. It was a lot. Well, and as we learned, supply chains were pretty much what won World War II. I mean, oh, that, yeah. was a, that was a huge Logistics part. Logistics changed everything. Exactly. Literally. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, these are the new wheels. They look very nice. They roll very well. Probably look. Oops, oops. Oh, I'm sorry. Does this open up? Yes, it does. You can put a guy in here. And it will come with a guy. It'll be a slight update of the... Previous the, Red Ball Express driver? No, actually. Okay. Uh, well, yes, uh, it's a new Red Ball Express driver, but it's the uniform from the uh, the Long Tom guy. 
Oh, very cool. Yeah, like the long tom, and appropriately, the guy that came with the uh, the the three five two, the big truck. Mm -hmm. So he's just going in another truck. Or that. You yes. <laughs> there we go. We're gonna pretend like nothing happened. Now there you have it. The new deuce and a half. But well, yeah, also this new. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, like we're going for dark tan, but like these trucks are obviously supposed to be green. Mm -hmm. And Slam might be roasting me for bringing this up in a video, but oh well. So I wanted to like bring up this green because it's just a nice contrast it probably suits more for cold war but it looks good yeah it definitely it definitely it's a new look. look so and i'm really happy with how it came out and it's going to be one that's going to be cool to see in convoys oh ah, yes you can definitely build this bad oh, boy yes up. hold up of course printing uh fender markings right here we're actually printing this whole grill yep now normally we would just use the one by two grill pieces for all the other trucks but the red balls actually had their marker here which is literally a red ball mm-hmm so we are actually going to print this whole thing uh, hooded here, printing stars on the doors, uh, text all over this uh, back panel. And yeah, of course, the 3D printed wheels. Oh, also these grills. Nice. We printed on the, the grills and the yeah, serial okay. numbers. Yeah. Yeah, this will be, this truck will be decked out all over. And yes, I will buy one. <laughs> Sweet. I try to buy most of my kits. So there you have it. That is the new deuce and a half for the Red Ball Express available right now on pre-order on BrickMedia.com. Nate, thanks for checking in. Yep. All right, moving on, we have the M1A 155mm howitzer, specifically from the 333rd Field Infantry Battalion, which has a very interesting and tragic story behind it, so I strongly recommend you check out BrickMania.com for more details on that. But Mary was the designer of this kit. Uh, it does include the minifigure you see pictured here, so Mary, talk to us a little bit more about this build. Yeah, so this is an updated version of Dan's original design for this kit, mm -hmm. and mostly I just brought in like new parts because the design itself is pretty solid. Yeah. Um, um, so I was able to get a few more details in there. Uh, just for example, like this is sort of a spring mechanism here. Um, so that's represented using all of those, um, the one by one rounds with the through hole. Mm -hmm. So you can stack all of those up and it can look like that spring. Um, yeah, overall, that really accurately represents that. That's nice. Yeah, yeah, right. Um, I was also able to add, so like, I don't know if, if you're familiar with the previous one. Mm -hmm. um, I was able to add some more details on the back here. So there's this essentially plate that that goes in between when uh, it's together when it's ready to be moved. Be towed, yeah. yeah. Um, but then when you separate it, uh, you can just this back. Oops, I just pop that off. Sorry. One sec. <laughs> um, and then so so that detail is is new there. Uh, we're using a, a sign. I, I like this piece. I don't get to use it enough. Yeah, but sure. it's, it's just like it's got the, the little clip on the back, which was honestly perfect for it. It's like the perfect height for that. Awesome. Um, and then this is posable. This is also posable. It's got this kind of foot Stabilizer, in front yeah, yeah. to stabilize it. Um, and then, of course, there's like all of this going on in the center with all of these different tubes and, and things. Yeah, it does um, look like there's a lot going on. So for it to function <laughs> smoothly, that's that's no, no yeah. easy trick. <laughs> honestly, it yeah, there really is a lot going on. And I was able to capture um, the different widths of things mm -hmm. um which is interesting because you know with lego there's only like three different widths you can right. get so it's like we're using like the technic pins on top there um for like the slightly thicker ones and we just have the bars and then we have this technic piece and then down here because this is like an in-between one like i use a technic axle mm -hmm. which like isn't perfectly round but i feel like it represents the size pretty well right so that was fun to to play around with too, trying to capture it as best I could. Also using a new wheel piece, which is fun. Like mm -hmm. you can't actually see it, but um, it's white, which is interesting. Um, and it's uh, like a newer mold of, of one of the previous wheel uh, rims, which, okay. which is cool. I was happy to be able to use that in there too. Um, but yeah, overall it's just like bringing this back so then we can, we can feature this. Yeah, right. This guy right there. <laughs> does come with a minifigure. No printing on the actual model itself, but obviously you do get that custom figure included in there. And then, like I said, 333rd Field, Inf or Field Artillery Battalion is who this is representing. Make sure to check out that story online uh, because it is very interesting. So, but there you have it. No pre-order here. This is available right now on BrickMania.com. Mary, thanks for checking in. Of course. All right, moving on, we have the Black Panther's 761st Tank Battalion Crew Pack, uh, which obviously would work wonderfully with our uh, recent Sherman, uh, as well as our recent Stewart. Landon designed these bad boys. We got a bunch of th new 3D printed elements, some reoccurring 3D printed elements, and then all new artwork. So let's talk about the Black Panther's Crew Pack. Awesome, awesome. This has been 
quite the uh, the undertaking. It's it's pretty much been a revamp of um, a lot of existing art, but bringing tons of new elements into the mix here. So um, again, this is kind of based on a lot of different photographs and um, just different soldiers from the era. Um, you know, primarily, obviously, this Black Panther's tank crew, but also, you know, there's inspiration here taken from like tank destroyer crews as well. Um, but just it's it's uh, equipment, it's gear that you'd you'd see right there um, on the front line. In uh, just these tankers are wearing this. So let's start off with this uh, this jumpsuit here. Um, one of my, this is like one of my favorite figures that uh, we've been able to produce here in recent times. I think uh, the artwork came together nice, the printing came together great, and obviously the source material is just about as cool as it gets. Mm -hmm. um, got a pistol belt wrapping around the whole way, and that's that's kind of it's total side or little miscellaneous detail. This is a pistol belt with that horizontal uh, webbing, um, whereas later on, like Vietnam era, they switched it to. Uh, to a uh, vertical, mm -hmm. just, so it's kind of an era distinguished thing there. Got his uh, pistol ammunition and the pistol hanging down there on the side, some binoculars. Um, there's a little bit of uh, texture all over this entire suit to really get that HBT, yeah. the carrying bone twill pattern um, fabric um, that uh, they would use of these jumpsuits. Uh, debuting our, uh, or this is one of our brand new helmets here. Um, the M38 tanker helmet, I believe. And with got, the goggles. With, the, got a with goggles, versions, right? Yeah. So um, that was kind of uh, when this, this whole project came up for on the project list um, and we started kind of ideating what we wanted it to look like. Um, you know, we had been wanting to make this tanker helmet for, for years and years. We've just been kind of using the stock Lego aviator cap as, as a stand-in. Mm -hmm. It worked well enough, but we figured, you know, we got our 3D printing um, you know, up and running, and the more parts that we can, you know, produce in house, it's it's uh, it's just cool exclusive stuff that we got to produce for you well, guys. Well, and the, obviously the historical accuracy yeah, and it's is historically unmatched. accurate. This is this is the helmet, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's a it's a really awesome one thirty fifth recreation of this in that Lego kind of aesthetic. Mm -hmm. So it's not like hyper hyper detailed, um, but, but it, it looked kind of funny if it was. I think it get, yeah, I think it gets everything. You know, um, yeah, Lego is an interesting aesthetic to kind of work in. Because um, we're not simply just scaling something down, there is a little bit of proportions to everything. Yeah, absolutely. Um, these are bobblehead dolls, right? Yeah, <laughs> so not like, to mention that the Lego is, doesn't look like a scaled down human. Figure, so. Yeah, right? The <laughs> minifigure, a, he's a character for sure. Um, unique face printing on all these guys. I, I just, again, trying to get as much character into here as mm -hmm. possible. I want you to kind of imagine a story in your head when you're, when you're uh, building a diorama. You know, bring these guys to life, you know. Um, so. Pouring through for historical photographs, I found one with um, one guy on top of the tank. He's wearing these um, GI issue um, like sunglasses. They're just like transparent plastic kind of material mm -hmm. uh, with uh, with the lenses, the shade lens in there. And he just had a smirk on his face, so it was fun to uh, try to capture that. Even though these these images are just like so grainy old photographs, um, it's still you can kind of get the character of people. I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, He's wearing the coveralls there uh, on top of the sweater. So um, I think we debuted the, a little bit of the this, this sweater um, back in our Fury pack, but it was just showing underneath a, of a, one of the jackets. Mm -hmm. Now this is a, uh, um, we have the whole sweater here. It's, it's a weirdly looking, almost formal sweater. Actually, if you wouldn't kind of at first glance think that this was part of um, a military a combat uniform. Sure. But it was, you know, it was issued and used in the front lines, mm -hmm. and you kind of just start to see it everywhere once you know what you're looking for. But it's just kind of a fancy-looking button-up sweater. Uh, got, got this heavy-duty knit kind of pattern to it. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, it looked, looked warm, so I guess they're using it if it worked. Mm -hmm. um, he's got his boots on, so those are not the shoe packs. They are. There's there's kind of two boots that look pretty similar at this scale. There's a like a, a rubberized technician boot, and then there's like an over boot. Okay. Um, so it's, it's uh, you probably would see the that rubberized technician boot in this scenario, but it could also be that that other kind of rubberized canvas looking one. But it, another um, not as uh, you wouldn't think about this boot as your as you're like creating a World War II American soldier or, or, or tanker, but you know when you go through photographs, they're they're wearing all sorts of different gear. And um, you know you start to see these different unique um, pieces of equipment um, here and there. So, especially like as the war went later on, you'd see them in this boot a lot. So, um, yeah. Moving on now, this guy he's got the sweater uh, kind of fully shown off here all the way around, and he's got some bandoliers. So this might be a bit more typical of a, of a tank destroyer crew where they have sure. 
they're fighting a little bit more directly as opposed to just uh, buttoned up inside of a tank. But, you know, um, who knows if they're maybe like on guard duty or something. Yeah, you know. put it in your story. Right. Make so it who, part who of it. I just gave it some variety. Um, there's some iconic photographs. Uh, if, if you're familiar with some military history, you might recognize um, some of these uniform configurations. So. Yeah. Uh, definitely taking some inspiration there. Uh, wool trousers and those same boots again. Um, nice, simple guy, but I thought he kind of had a, a slick look to him. Mm -hmm. um, he's kind of got a younger face, so again, trying to play into more different character types. Yeah, here. I love it. Yeah. Uh, finally, we got uh, this guy here with the um, just the standard uh, tanker helmet, no goggles, but that is kind of the base. You know, that's that's it. That's the mm -hmm. tanker helmet, right? Well, and if you're maybe the gunner. Yeah. Yeah. So he's got, it's great, he's, this helmet, um, it, was, it was interesting, you know, kind of going back and forth with Amanda. Uh, she did a great job recreating this. Um, when, you know, there's different prototype versions that she'll try out, even just digitally or whatever, and she'll we'll kind of bounce around and see what's working. Um, and one note was th this helmet, it's just really got this, this kind of like straight bulbous sort of front end on it. And, mm -hmm. and uh, it, it actually fits to a minifigure head pretty well. So it's like, that's yeah. the helmet you'd design if you were a minifigure. But in, in real life, they do kind of have this like football helmet kind of look to mm -hmm. it. So. I mean, the original ones were based off of football helmets. So. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I suppose that would make sense. Yeah, there's Back a famous the day, picture leather. of yep. uh, Patton wearing a football helmet. It's like, this should, this should be our tanker uniform. Like, well, <laughs> let's, let's think about that a little bit here. No kidding. <laughs> uh, we got the um, pistol holster um, behind his tanker jacket there. Nice open up tanker jacket. Kind of got that informal look to it. Um, just again for some variety. Um, the kits that are coming out kind of alongside all this, they also feature this tanker jacket in kind of different configurations. So cool. this, this whole release wave is kind of, it's really unprecedented here at Brickmania. We've, we've never had this much variety come out kind of all at the same time, really capturing um, to the best of our ability, just really the look of the era for, mm -hmm. for these American tankers. So I'm really happy that it's kind of a, we're seeing the culmination of, of everything Brickmania is capable of and it's now coming like directly to uh, our product line. So it's really been really awesome to see. Uh, tanker patch on the side, wool boots or wool trousers and gaiters. That wraps it up. Yeah. Man, <laughs> that is absolutely incredible. Yeah, I mean, one of my favorite projects of recent times. So that's been, it's been, it's been a pleasure. Absolutely. Well, and I think it'll be a real pleasure for the people who are able to get their hands on it as well. So this is gonna go quick. I'm, I'm fully expecting this to be fast. Um, so odds are if you've watched this far into the video and haven't checked the website yet, you might be disappointed. Um, but otherwise, head over there right now and make sure to scoop it up because this is going to be a very popular release, as the figure packs normally are. Uh, and then obviously we'll do our best to restock it in the future. But the Black Panthers crew pack, now available on BrickMedia.com. Remember, the M5A1 Stewart uh, and the new M4A3 uh, 76mm Sherman both would work wonderfully uh, with this crew pack. So make sure to pick those up. There's all plenty of links on the product page, etc., for that as well. Landon, thanks for showing these off, man. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so moving on, we have a standalone minifigure release I think a lot of people are going to be excited to see because this is the Navy SEAL Diver now available as a standalone. So I've got Amanda joining us here to talk a little bit more about not only the artwork on this figure, but also the significant 3D printing that goes into this. Yeah, this is the second diver that I got to do right in a row because um, I also got to do the Frogman, mm -hmm. which was really exciting. Um, and then I was like, oh, wait, another mask in uh, full rebreather action going yeah. on here. Um, yeah, this was super fun to um, to sit and try to find uh, information about like kind of the gear they were wearing. And mm -hmm. like the biggest thing I found out is it changes, like the loadout is completely different for missions and what right. training and oh yeah. It, it took a lot of like poking around until I found like a, a happy medium. Sure. Um, and then also what would uh, work with uh, fitting into the actual kit at yeah, the time. Yeah, right, the, uh, the seal delivery vehicle. Yep, the seal delivery, um, because uh, if the backpack was too wide, then he couldn't fit in the seat. And right. So, um, which is why he's just got a nice little loadout pack in the back there. Um, which almost makes designing that 3D printed parse even more impressive, because you're not just <laughs> going off of the historical, what you're trying to find information-wise, but you've got to integrate it with a kit, too. Yeah, that was because uh, originally I actually had uh, a much bigger pouch back there and um, a couple of other little... Like the uh, the tank was um, much bigger and closer to the scaling. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, anytime you're making something for the minifigs, scale is always you know this kind of. There's so many interpretations of it. Interesting way of uh, <laughs> trying to find things out. So that was super fun. Um, but yeah, he's got like a little extra um, air tank mm -hmm. going on there back there. Um, I believe that is probably the one that inflates the uh, the 
buoyancy, the buoyancy. Yeah, vest? right. That's a word. Buoyancy. Buoyancy vest. Buoy- buoyancy vest. Um, but yeah, so that was super fun. Um, and then yeah, I was gonna say let's take it apart. Obviously, we've got the flippers on. I there. made the mistake <laughs> of putting uh, lotion on. There we go. Um, so uh, yeah, underneath the 3D print, we have just kind of a nice little wetsuit. Um, that was fun to try to get some a little bit of detail while still remaining yeah. black. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and then, uh, so yeah, this this fits over the shoulders, and then uh, you pop the head on there, and that's what secures it. Eyes line up. That was a little tricky. I bet. Um, because you don't obviously want to make them look silly on their standalone. Yeah, exactly. And but it had to still look like the right mask, and mm-hmm. so that was really fun. Um, that was I really enjoyed this. Uh, this was one of uh, the more challenging, um, like technically, uh, to design and uh, do. Just um, because it's like small eye holes, and right. I had done a little bit with the gas mask earlier um, in the year, and that was had a little bit more forgiveness because it wasn't quite as wide. Sure, um, nose piece. But yeah. Um, and so uh, have he's got his little hood going on there, so you can see his face. Um, and then he's got the zipper going up the back. Mm-hmm. He's got a watch uh, that Landon helped me do a little research and be like, "Yeah, that's the watch they would use." That is the one. Yeah. Um, sidearm, it looks like too. Yep, got a little sidearm going. Got uh, the knife on the side. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's uh, he's pretty decked out. Um, yeah, yeah, for just a black figure, there's a lot of subtle details, and uh, I think people yeah. like taking off those 3D printed elements and seeing everything that's yeah, underneath. <laughs> kind of like what you guys did with the uh, with the Legionnaire as well. Yeah. So, so. I, I, yeah, I think he turned out really cool. Uh, hopefully, people dig him. Yeah, definitely worthy of a standalone release. Now available on BrickMania.com, the U.S. Navy SEAL diver. Amanda, thanks for checking in. Thank you. All right, that'll just about do it for a Friday sit rep. Remember, if you are in the Vallejo, California, or San Diego, California areas, and would like to join the BrickMania team, make sure to reach out to us via our careers page because we are still actively looking for employees for both of those store locations. And then finally, just another quick note, remember hashtag giveaways are still going strong on social media. So January's hashtag was Vietnam Bricks. We are going to select a winner for that. The t-shirt's not done yet. The design is pretty much finalized, uh, but obviously we've got to get it off to printing, etc. Um, so now we're using hashtag Black Heritage uh, moving on into February. Um, remember, all you got to do is post tag Brickmania, use the hashtag Brickmania, use the hashtag from that month, uh, tag us, post relevant content, all that kind of fun stuff. You can enter as many times as you want. We're following all the hashtags that get you entered in that stuff. Uh, so just make sure to participate that way across any platform of social media. We'll be checking as many as we can. We don't have a TikTok yet, uh, so maybe not that one, but Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, you're all good on those three, um, and we'll be able to get that stuff figured out. So that is the deal for hashtag giveaways. If you have any questions, just shoot us a DM uh, on social media and we'll get it all figured out because uh, we want as many people participating in that as possible because we want to give away free shirts. I mean, who doesn't want a free shirt that nobody else can buy? I mean, that's pretty dang cool. So, and trust me, when you see them, you'll be even more excited because uh, we haven't had anything like this in the Brickmania swag lineup in a minute. So very, very much so looking forward to that. Otherwise, that will do it for a Monday, for a Friday sit rep. Thank you very much for watching.